back and ready to go. Okay, let's call our regular board meeting to order. Uh, additions to the agenda. Administrative contracts. Admin contracts. And so, I have that on there. Okay, so that will be... That's under new business personnel on the back side. Are we... So, screen? Yes, yes, we are live and in living color on the internet. I'd like to add further discussion on the counselor position in Century Code. And I prefer, if you could, move that up the agenda to have some help in, from the public here on discussion of that. So, if you want to see, you want to talk more about the the counselor position, including the career advisor. So I'll put that in there. I, and the reasoning advisor, behind it is I still counselor. do not think we are following Century Code correctly. By having a counselor. Okay, correct. Well, uh, I, I'm thinking maybe we should not put that on because our, our administration isn't aware of it. And I think what you should do is bring it to the next meeting and then talk with him. I would agree with you, Dwayne, but I think some of the discussion in the new business is going to involve what, for the board to make a good decision on some of the discussion in the new business, we need to be fully informed on what we're deciding on. Fair enough. So we'll tie that to the career advisor slash counselor. I know it's different. Career advisor and counselor. It is right. confusing. But we'll talk. We'll talk about it. Then. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the addition. Okay, we've got a motion. A second. A second. Discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. All right. Consent agenda. Minutes from our regular meeting. Five eight. Anybody have any additions or corrections? Anything on that? Okay, seeing none, let's move to regime board bills. Questions on bills? Not on the bills directly, but with with the bus maintenance, do we? Is that just on the as need basis, or do we have a contract with Frederick on that? Or is there as need? As need. Okay. We try and. Use as much local. Oh yeah, I, I'm all for the local use. I'm just kind of wondering if we can look at a if some type of contract would be the wise way to go there. Is that a uh, that eleven thousand seven hundred uh, an accumulated amount from several months, or did we have a big one, big one? Well, it's all those buses. Yeah, three, four bus, three, four, six, five. There was a, a whole bunch of them that had. Gotcha. One was starter, one was, I don't remember, a bearing going off the wheel or something. Accumulated. Yeah, it was a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And my point would be just, you know, if you're running a business like that, if you know you have a contract, you might be able to do better with your employees and staff and maybe even help the district out too. So it's something I think we should entertain a discussion around. But I'm all for the local. Okay. All right, any other questions? Okay. 
Okay, see you now. Now you can roll on the financial reports and our balance sheet. Questions, comments, concerns, balance sheet. Mr. Bones, you have text that they can't hear online with the background noise. I don't know if you tried it. The doors shut. Does the out-of-district tuition just get paid at the end of the year for a true-up, or how did that? Yep, everybody's saying at the end of the year, everybody sends out their bills. Okay, guys, have any other questions or concerns on everybody? Expenditures. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay. And student activity will be our last portion of the consent agenda. Okay, any questions? Do you want to know how much pause have in there? Sure. <laughs> 21,917. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was the beginning balance. You ended with what? <laughs> no, I lost it. 17,817. 
Okay, if there are no other questions or concerns, I would entertain a motion to approve consent agenda. So move. Okay, a motion for a second. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. All right. Activity director's report. All I have for Mrs. Mason is that um, the coaches are working hard with camps. We have football going on on Mondays. We have um, boys and girls um, open gyms, and then we have um, elementary camps. A lot of team camps going on right now, and then we have elementary girls camp that was put in, elementary boys camp that was just put in. I think she sent out the all call today. I didn't check it. She said she was going to, but That's gym's cool. full. Um, she sent me a schedule of all the things going on every day over here so we could help parents out on a phone call because sometimes it's hard to keep track of it all. So. so that's what we got. All right. Thank you. Principal reports. Mr. Patterson. Um, update on summer school. We had uh, 13 enrolled right now, so that'd be next year's first through sixth graders. Um, Mrs. Christensen and uh, Brandy Kitson are, are running it. Um, they, they did a different format, if you will, compared to last summer. So they chose to do um, five weeks, four days a week. So one big chunk versus two. I think they did two sessions. How long were the sessions last year? Like three or four weeks? They were, the first session was in June, the second was in July. Okay, so instead of two sessions, we did one big one to kind of get them to their summer break a little earlier. So TBD on which one they prefer. Um, after they finish up, but uh, through the summer school, they require 30 hours of reading and 30 hours of math, and that'll get that they'll reach that in their 20 days of summer school for those that are signed up. Um, bouncing way back to something, finally finished. I appreciate you guys' patience on our reading curriculum. Um, everything's everything's finalized and everything is set up. So, um, kindergarten through fifth grade will be using a curriculum called Bookworms. Um, and they are set up and registered for training at the end of July, July 23, 24, and 25. Um, and we have 12 staff members that are signed up for that, which is awesome. And that'll be like the initial training, how to how to use the curriculum, how to go in and navigate the, the digital part of it as well. Um, the big seller of Bookworms was our, our teachers do small groups in their ELA every day. And um, with the curriculums we looked at, this, this was basically the only one that had small small groups built in 45 minutes a day. So they have three blocks um, in that they call it DI, D Differentiated Instruction Block, is their small group instruction. Um, and that was kind of our, our, our big sell on that. So we're looking forward to that. We have all the materials for that at Taylor already. So you learn that once they get their money, they will act very quick. So they were on top of that. I think we got it within a couple weeks of paying them or signing the PO, letting them know that we're on board. Um, six through eight is going to be using a uh, curriculum called Amplify. Um, and again, that is, um, it's ordered. Staff are signed up for training on August 12th. Their, their initial training is a little bit different. They will do three hours of virtual training. I'm sorry, uh, going back to book real quick. That's all virtual, all three days are virtual. Um, there's a kindergarten, first and second grade band, and then a third, fourth, and fifth grade band. So working with grade level teachers or close to grade level teachers. Um, Amplify. We have five members, staff members signed up for that. Um, they kind of they, they'll do an initial three-hour training. Um, again, just just the overview of it. Um, their second session of training is a one-hour kind of check-in a few months into the school year, and then they'll do near the end of the school year another three hours to to see how the year went and what adjustments they can make. So, um, the only day scheduled so far though is that August twelfth, that initial one to get, get the ball rolling with that. Um, Just when you say five staff, is it by teachers or a mix of pairs? Oh, and admin. admin. Yep, okay. and title teachers and admin. Yep, title. Okay. Yep. Um, then switching to the high school side, um, state scholarships for our seniors this year, we had um, seven that have, had earned that state scholarship, whether it was the academic or CTE um, pathway of that. Um, with, with still a one possible because the seniors this year seniors are in a weird spot they're the last group for the old state scholarship requirements juniors and everyone moving for next year seniors and everyone behind them um, it'll, it will be called just the North Dakota State Scholarship so you don't have that you don't have the CTE and the academic it's just 
into one and they they kind of rearrange their their requirements and some indicators to meet and things like that is that um, good or bad for our student population in your opinion um, I, I think it's good because okay. we do really well with dual credits and, and main P courses okay. and that's a big one and something as simple as hey have you worked for 40 hours in high school okay. check a box you know and um, and a really easy one for us to get the military, the military ready pillar. Um, if they can get a C or higher in PE, which just show up and just show up. I don't know if you have to change it, you have to see to show up, just be there. Um, and then if they get a, if they, they lowered their ASVAB score from an 81 to a 50. So if they get above a, a 50 or higher and that A, B, or C in their PE courses, that pillar's done, they just have to get two additional things from the other pillars, and so they can borrow from other pillars now versus this one, this one, or this one. Oh, okay. So it, it, it's different, but it, it's supposed to provide more options okay. for students to be able to reach that scholarship. Um, but again, that, that ACT is immovable, so that ACT stays at a 24. And we saw seven get it this year out of Yep, and two of them earned it with, you know, outside of their other indicators, two of them met that ACT requirement, so it kind of shows that how important that work keys is, because five, Got it through their work keys testing. Okay, so it's, it's a very good alternative, and that AC or the work key stays as the alternative on the new requirements as well. They can get the ACT score or get certain scores on their work keys. Um, so seven ought to remind me again how many seniors did we? Fourteen that could. So thank you. Yeah, and that's a six thousand dollar scholarship. And one limo, right? Is what you're And one who's they because she's. The students trying to get qualified on the new requirements, they kind of have to go in there and manipulate a little bit more than just looking at it on the, the system that's kind of built into the old one. So, I think, yeah, I just encourage the board to look into that more. I think that the state can afford a little more of that and maybe talk to our future representatives a little bit here. So, I think it's, I mean, it's good to hear that they're making options, but still wonder about our challenge to get that. So, sure. And everything else I was going to talk about was covered in our initial meeting, or the meeting before the meeting, if you will. So um, that is all I have. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Vogel. Well, Jesse just covered all the updated scholarships, so um, I'm good with that. That was a great job. Um, social studies curriculum, uh, the team chose Teach TCI. They felt that it was the most hands-on curriculum that they could take and work with immediately. Um, there will be a couple grades that aren't using it for the fact that they teach specific standards according to the state for Lake North Dakota Studies. Um, the teachers had option if they wanted online license, if they wanted um, student online license or teacher or the curriculum itself. Um, and so we just did a spreadsheet of how the teachers were going to best utilize that curriculum and will be with your approval ordering based on what the teachers wanted for the classrooms. But out of a few curriculums, um, it was led by the um, social studies teacher, Mr. Kohler. He did the research about what curriculums should be used throughout to be consistent, and then set up the meetings, and we met and went through what would meet the teachers' needs and what wouldn't. Could you say the name of the program again? Teach TCI. TCI. Mm -hmm. I'm going to steal Dr. Vogel's verbiage. Pending your approval, <laughs> six through eight, has pot will potentially use Amplify. Sorry. You may be sending boxes back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you ordered it already. Well, after July 1, I'll yeah. for that. For a payment, but. <laughs> I have a couple um, kiddos that are taking some extra classes. I have someone that actually a couple kids looking at have heavy operating equipment through RACTC, but RACTC isn't sure if they'll have it up and running by fall. So we figured into their schedules that they'd have um, space either fall or spring. Um, and then we have um, growing numbers and dual credits, mostly because we have um, our teachers 
now qualified to be able to offer that, but also kind of sistering with Lake Region of being so kind of working with our students and that seems to be growing to get their dual credits up. I do feel that that somewhat helps them prepare for college, which is maybe why you're getting some students more comfortable with the online, but also working with instructors and communicating. Um, they have extra help here. Like if someone says, I'm really struggling with this class, is there someone that can help? We send out an email, we check. Sometimes we can, sometimes we say, let's call your instructor and see what you can do. So just set up those communication things, understanding. If that helps. Okay, any questions? All right. Thank you, Dr. Bowman. All right, old business. <clears throat> those are the bids we received for the HVAC. And the building committee sat down and talked about it, and they we decided to go with H.A. Uh, Thompson and Sons bid. So we accepted that bid, and right now H.A. Uh, Thompson and Son is working with Danny's Electric to get all the electric stuff squared away. And that's where we're at with that. Good job. RTPS, locker room, shower drains, camp rec, went to use the showers on Monday night in the boys' locker room, and it would not drain and was full water. <clears throat> um, so we, I called in R&R, &R, who helped us out over at Taylor, the and, and they saved the day. <laughs> um, this is what they pulled out of there, along with... Um, Trunks of cast iron pipe? Yes. Now, uh, according to Amber and I were talking about it, H.A. <coughs> Thompson and Son re sleeve those lines. Well, I thought we did something yeah. like that. Yeah, we did. Yeah, in 2022, I think. I don't think it worked. <laughs> 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 Proud evidence. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're definitely going to have to. R and R said they would come out and well I'm sure AJ Thompson some ran a video camera through there and everything, but he said there's like different options you could do, but with the deterioration of that pipe, you know, it's not as many options as no. Make. No. But I mean, he was able to get it unplugged. There was a Sharpie in there and some other foreign objects, but that was the most of it that gunk. They didn't run a camera no. Nope, not. He, he said he would come back out and then they could. I wonder if we should make H.A. Thompson do it if they would think so. Steam it. Just say, hey, you guys, we had an issue. We had to call somebody in to come in and fix it. We need you to come kind of look at it. Yeah, I <clears throat> would be my suggestion. I would too. But I'm not for, sure if there's a warranty or there or whatever yeah, on it, but at least they can yeah. be like, yep, no, didn't And that was in 21. Yeah. So I think it was in the summer of 21. And it was 18,000. Right. Well, I think we just said we were going to use them again, right? So, I don't know. If we yep. turn on this one, maybe they should, maybe should hold that a little longer. Just a suggestion. I know you've been talking about the locker rooms and, it, you know, maybe once you get the HVAC project done and next year if Dunn County keeps providing you know, those construction loans at 200 some thousand dollars, maybe, maybe it'd be prudent to put together a phase of like, you know, you know, this year, let's do this. And then next year, if we get that same amount of money, then let's do this, right. you know, maybe start with the pipes. And, uh, yeah, we might get at the point where we need to jackhammer out concrete, remodel. All right. So, so yeah. all the fixtures, all the, I mean, it's not going to be any cheaper than it is today. No, no. no. So, just an FYI on that, but we can check with H.A. Thompson and Son and see what the long-term planning. I mean, maybe we should be, I mean, we've been talking about that for oh, yeah. Since I was several years. I think so. Do you want me to oh, put should. down the facility? I'll put down. Yeah, we sure could. Uh, it's, it, we need it. Yeah, we need it. Got to spend some of those extra funds. There you go. <laughs> Uh, activities 
with Huddle, we looked at it and um, it was going to cost us about $5,700 to buy the athletic package. Um, and what the quote they were giving us was 12006 So we're about $6,000 difference. Um, but with, and we had to make a decision by um, June 1st in order to keep those rates. You know, they always have these marketing things. Um, so I just went ahead and proved it. And we have, um, we have it locked in for three years at 12-6. And that would cover the elementary, the high school, gymnasium, and the football field. And people could stream it for free. However, when they go away to some place that has NFHS, you're still going to have to have the NFHS pass if you want to watch wherever they're at. But as far as for home games, um, it would be all free. And then we would have the option to do advertising, which I think we could easily um, recoup that six dollars. So we signed up for three years and um, I think we have Adam already got some stuff. So, and what's nice about these monitors is there's no computer with it. So, like with those Pixelots, if you look up, you see there's a big case hanging on the outside that has a computer that hooks up to the Pixelot. This is just um, internet and power. That's all you need. So, the one thing in Taylor will probably have to run. Um, some electrical because I'm I don't know what's on that uh, east wall there of the gym. I don't think there's a lot of plugins over there. So, but that to me would probably be the place to put it unless you're putting it above the gym or the stage, which might be above stage too high. I don't know. Like that. Um, okay. Well, if we're committed to that, do we have someone who can head up advertising sales? <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, once, I know Ad, um, Adam and Jordan sat down with the guys, so I think, uh, you know, between those two, we can figure out how to do the advertising and get some. Do they install this for us? Huddle? Yes. They do. So it's a, <clears throat> we're looking at a three-year contract? No. Yeah, what's the clauses for breaking it if we're not happy? I don't know. Okay. Oh, <laughs> right. Well, fair enough. About the easiest way. I know there's lots of other schools that are using it and they're very happy with it. We have a lot of issues with that. I don't want to sit there and just. Yeah, I, I watched it. Huskers, huh? Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay. Anything else? New business. All right, new business. Title. We got our estimated Title One funds. Um, as you can see, like when I talked um, the previous meeting about how the numbers had adjusted and went up, that it would probably mean more money. So we got about ten thousand nine hundred sixty-six more dollars than last year for Title One. And then with Carl Perkins funds, um, if you remember, we're no longer part of the New Salem Consortium and we're now part of the Heading Consortium. Um, and estimated Carl Perkins is 7690 and that's the forms that we split out to what we wanted, what uh, Mr. Isaac and Mrs. Dorman were looking at. Mr. Isaac is looking into uh, a welding robotic arm. So, right. 
Um, SR3 updates. So, in talking with Amber and uh, Russ, uh, we decided that we were going to try and close out the SR3 this fiscal year. Meaning, oh. Amber submitted salaries for up to four, what was it, four months, 120 days. Yeah. Back. And so that got to about most of it, except for about 41,000. Um, we haven't heard back yet if it's been approved, but we haven't heard back that we've been denied. So that's good. Um, okay. So that's that was the plan there that we wanted to finish that up this fiscal year. Then we don't have to fill out more reports down the line because if if we carry it over into the next fiscal year, then you're going to have to fill out another report at the end of the whole entire year. And then instead, we could just do the one report that hey, we're done. If so there's $41,000 left after what you've already submitted? Right. Okay. That we need to spend. Okay. And which we have next year? Well, but you want to finish it No, year, we right? want to finish, we'll finish oh, well, it. We'll finish it all this year. So, okay. Um, and that's where the next part comes in. So, like, the social studies curriculum um, is, that one actually is a good, pretty good deal. $20,000 for six years. So, that's a good one. Um, and the also the the reading curriculum is we went with three years and that's eleven thousand dollars for all three years. So we're at thirty one thousand and then we'll just mess around and get the rest taken care of. Oh, and then um, the Wagner music chairs. Uh, wow, wait, where should I just keep talking? Oh, yeah. We're already it's all, it's all, it's it's all <coughs> intertwined yeah. anyway. Yeah. So um, the music chairs, if you remember when we built the school, um, we had to make some cuts and one of those was with furnishings and um, Yeah, we didn't buy a lot of furniture. No. So the music chairs are definitely um, in need of update. And I, I put some pictures on there. That shows you how the seats are cracked and um, the formica is coming off the tops of the desk. So, Mrs. Um, Gress figured out what she wanted and what type of chair and had students sit in it, and this is what she came up with. So, and that once again, we'd use ESSER funds, but we'd just use that money that we got from the salaries to. Because I'm not going to send her, uh, Mrs. Butterworth, a music chair thing to have her send it back to me and say it doesn't work. Even though music things are supposed to work. But it's just a lot cleaner the other way. So. Does that make sense? With all that? That's all I had on this or three years. Okay. Uh, and that takes care of curriculum and instruction? Well, well no, instruction. we have to. We, we need to act need on those. Act on those. Okay. Which one individually? I would imagine. Mr. Patterson acted on one already. <laughs> 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 so just for clarity on the salaries portion, we're just truly submitting for salaries for that funding. It's not as though we're adjusting any salaries or anything. It's just what's already been paid out. Okay. So you can go back 120 days. Right. Okay. I mean, just a general statement on that, you know, it is what it is. It was challenging to use up these funds, but in general, the purpose of the SR3 funds was to help schools deal with the hardships that were brought on by the COVID year and, uh, you know, a lot of our teachers and that had to adjust and, and uh, why we've seen it in the test scores. So um, I just encourage us to keep digging for where we can use our funds for intended purposes too. Like a social studies curriculum or reading? I mean, sure. We're looking at yeah, absolutely. So, I yeah. mean, that's, yeah. those funds are going to help cover that. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and basically, you've been able to update 
all of your core curriculum what you guys are for that's great it's been helpful okay so i start with cyber security plan <clears throat> this is a requirement um it's the state yep so dr vogel put together um been working with mr, mr. ziegler um, and talking with jesse yep put together the the plan that we need to have in place starting on July 1st. Make a motion to accept the cybersecurity plan. So is this just copied and pasted out of Elgin? Or? Yes and no. So when we talk to Russ, because um, I see it still says in there, students in Elgin and Leipzig. Oh, does it? Yep. That was the plan that he had originally come up with and then discussed it with me and then asked me to go in on um, the high school side and add teachers in who would teach it and what class it would fall under, but everything else stayed exactly the same because this was an example given out by the state of where those standards could be met. And if um, some of the standards are already being met in those areas, um, and then some just need to be conscious of having the conversation or meeting those standards when they teach specific things they're already teaching. So it was, it was trying to make it as easy as possible with less work for as many as possible. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it just looked copy and pasted, yeah. so I was wondering if we went through it and made sure that we can manage this as a staff. Yep, yep. So um, everything else through elementary was left alone. Library was left alone, um, which I'll have to look into. I have some library association sites that I can get a lot of free stuff from, and then I'm going to substitute with some lesson plans with my people to fill the other ones that so do we have get. a library media specialist i'm the library media specialist okay. yep so um i'll be working with them in july i talked to both of them right now both of them would like one's very busy and one would like a little summer sure. yeah. <laughs> so we'll be working pretty hard in july to cover a lot of those things and then we did as minimal amount as possible in the classrooms and then High school is already, like I said, covering a lot of it in different classes that they have, so they just have to know which specific class they're teaching it in. But this might, um, approval of the board and then forwarded to the state may make it so that the students don't have to take two separate cybersecurity for credit for graduation, and then that would open them back up to some of the um, electives that they want to be in or would choose. They may still choose cybersecurity, but right now you're seeing low numbers in some of your other areas because they were supposed to get one full credit. Well, that's two classes out of all the electives that, I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, I'm just disappointed that the state put this on us. Well, to that point, yeah, that's when I looked at this, what is it, a 30 page document here? I was blown away by the content of this and yeah. my concern is around staffing it um yeah and then it's a law so i mean it's interesting to so and that's what i was wondering if coming through it so coming through it you feel like you, we can accomplish this with our staff i do um this is actually better than limiting our students to their offerings um so like when it says the english teacher if they're already doing research on the internet it's a conversation and discussion about what are the safeties of the internet? What are the safe sites you can be on? What are sites that you shouldn't be on? What is the best information? What's not the best, mm -hmm. you know, sure. some of those things that are integrated. Or how to identify a legitimate right. mm -hmm. source. Yeah. Yep. So, but it's pretty extensive. Um, a lot, I shouldn't say a lot, but some of it was already done through the library, but now, um, a lot more will be through the library and then spread across to where it can be. Can I ask a question? Jesse, do you feel like what you see for elementary, because this is the first I've seen it, is doable for elementary staff? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's following directions to use a device. Explain that the connecting device allows information to be shared. It's, it's very, very, very basic at the, at the elementary level. But it also includes a lot of the live like brandy covering it too. But it is targeted just at elementary and middle school, right? Not no, it's 
it's K through 12. That's why right now in our schedule, we have two classes in our schedule to get a full credit. But um, with this approved, then they wouldn't necessarily have to get a full credit in those specific courses because they're getting it throughout 9 through 12, if that makes sense. But we have to say who is teaching it, what class, where at, what period, how many minutes. Right. It's going to, you know, we're going to have to record it. What day was it in your plan, in your lesson plans? That's all going to have to be saved and recorded. <laughs> okay. Okay, John made a motion. Second. Do I have a second a motion? Any more discussion on the cybersecurity plan? Seeing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Social studies curriculum. Look at it particular there. This was that teach TCI. Yeah, we right? just talked. We talked teach TCI. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's twenty thousand for six years. Yeah. Well, Most of it's online. All our curriculums now it's a pay subscription. That's Not online ones. Where a lot of them are going. No more, going no more buy a book and you're set for ten years. Yeah, I mean, but I was actually surprised with these. Like, you know, with that wonders curriculum, that was eighteen thousand dollars just for one year, and then they wanted forty-five thousand for three years. Oh. You know, so I mean, when we can get six years for twenty thousand, that's what's been the last bill comparatively of a traditional book and and that. I mean, one of those a similar price or. Better well, until we paid, we paid what, eighteen thousand for one year of, to yeah, continue to the wonders, yeah, mm -hmm. just to get through this year, and then we yeah. got that grant. Do we get books with competition too, or not? Um, <laughs> they had the option, so um, there's a couple people that have some books. They stayed away from workbooks, so psychology and sociology will have the curriculum. Um, uh, grades two, five, six, seven, eight, ten. 11 and 12, which was the online. And I think the reason the online was such a seller is because you have so many lessons on there, but you have short videos that go along with those lessons for your visual learners to have that connection and then have better conversation. So if you've got the books, you don't have access to the online. Mm -hmm. You just still have to buy the lessons online. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to get us. <laughs> it's big business. Yeah. That's something we definitely need to make sure that the state knows for school funding that mm -hmm. this is the direction that it's going. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. So we'll all make a motion on one. I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll second it. Next step social okay. studies. Shannon Moon, Dwayne seconded. Any more discussion? Social studies curriculum? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Pull the same sign. Motion carries. Uh, reading curriculum, the six through eight reading. Yeah, that's yeah. the amplify that Mr. Patterson. Yep. Yep. Okay, you guys have any more questions or clarifications you want on that? If not, definitely entertain a motion on that as well. Also. Okay, we got a motion. A second. Motion and a second. Discussion on. Six through eight reading curriculum. <clears throat> Same thing, pretty much online, or is there books on this one? Um, so it's called a blended package. So they'll have they'll have physical books, but also the online component too. I, I like getting books. And that quote does include the uh, 1850 for the staff training. That's the three year curriculum plus the staff training. Oh. All right, any more discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Music chair proposal. 
I'll make a motion to accept the position chair proposal. Second. Okay, move and second. And any discussion? Discussion questions on music chairs? Saying none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All the same side. Okay, motion carried. All right, that gets us to personnel. Um, we received a letter of resignation from Mrs. Sarah Rohde. We'd like to thank her for her service. Okay. And and that is hence our opening for a para. Right. Let's go para. I'll make a motion to accept the letter of resignation. Do we need to? No. Okay. No worries. The second it though. <laughs> Okay, it takes us to teacher contract timing, and I believe there's a document in here regarding that, regarding what's in the, uh, what's in the collaborative bargaining agreement and the, uh, right, century code. Yeah. So we can, we can offer contracts as early as March 1st. And everything has to be on prior to May 1st, which you actually, that one you end up running into sometimes during negotiated years. Which is our year coming up, right? Next spring will be a negotiation year. Um, so yeah, you can offer contracts March, March 1st. I think, I think there's a huge one. upside to it. Yeah. Just you know what? have and not have them, you know, listing, but the longer it is, the less you have to pick from other places too, so, and the quicker you get yours out there, the sooner you can probably fill it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with this year, okay, now I say this year, this next year coming up, will be a negotiation year in 2025. Um, you know, in the interest of getting things out early, we, we need to start negotiations on January 1st. I mean, it's, it's got to start. What is start. the, is this include administration? Can be no sooner than March? Or is this just, I don't know, I don't have the time to look up the century code, but I well, guess this, it could. This one's talking, this, is, this one's talking teaching contracts. Okay, okay. certified. The only reason I'm bringing that up is that part of what's caused us some delay, you know, and I said it in the strategic planning meeting was <clears throat> administration turnover. So we're working to, you know, fill an administrative position at the same time we kind of, and I don't know if we intentionally, but we kind of hold off on some of the others, see what happens. Um, so that's another piece of this is uh, looking at when we offer our administrative contracts. I think it's wise to offer administrative contract prior to, if possible, so that you know if you have a vacancy there so that you can fill. Because an administrator should be involved in hiring staff that they're, you know, if then we have a vacancy and we got to hire, you kind of want the person that's going to be supervising in there. So, so what are you saying on administrative contracts? We should offer them before March 1st? Yeah, I would like to see administration contracts so that we know where we stand prior to offering offering uh, teacher contracts and stuff. Well, in the hopes of this century not having code is for contract uh, is for teachers and administrators. It is. Okay. And that <coughs> the earliest date in century code is the March 1? Correct. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. We have to look at changing timing on administrative contracts because right, we're just going to do it like right now. The principal, principal, business manager. It's kind of very the past four years. <laughs> so you can say whatever yeah. you want. Put it in. Well, I guess we can offer the contract. 
earlier for the upcoming year. Yeah, I mean, the intent is just that we're ahead as much as possible of the job market for replacements and or position ends. And, I mean, it's one of the things we can do. The other piece that I think would be in this same discussion, and again, all of this goes to collaborative bargaining, but there's nothing like discussing it and see where we can get to. Um, you know, I hope that the teachers want to see what we can do to get the best candidates, but but we tend to, if I'm, I don't know, I've been on the board a year, I think we voted on raises kind of mid-summer. Does that have to be? I, I, I'm just going to the point of where... Raises for? For teachers, mm -hmm. the percent. No, that was in the collaborative bargaining agreement. Okay. That was last, that was... I think we did a two-year agreement. Yeah, yeah, so that was in the Maybe spring. we did salary, that was for non-certified staff. Okay. Yeah. That would have been spring so up. last year we were voting on non-certified staff raises. Correct. I would say classified staff probably, raises. Probably. Okay. Yeah. So so when our teachers get a contract, it also includes well, it what they're paid. Okay. What yeah, their pay a, is going to be. Yeah, yeah, it's already written out. Right. Okay. So then when you're done negotiating and you issue the contract, they have so many days to sign it, and then that's, that's right. So what my question is is that the contracts we issue are pay with raise included mm -hmm. okay yeah it's yeah it's all okay it's all all defined okay and to answer damien's question it'd be nice to be done early a lot sure. of times you wait to see where you get for state funding so you know what you can give the teachers for salary you don't know what you're getting what you can give them so that pushes you back uh, tell me more on that because like it was stated once in one of the meetings that if we add a position we have to Rob from teacher pay. Help me understand that. I, I don't follow that. The, the, uh, in 20, spring of 2023, when we did the negotiated agreement again, we were waiting for the legislature to, to basically finish, right? I mean, they were. Right. So, and then that's how we ended up with a 3.25% three three raise, I think it was. Um, and that's what they came out with and said, yep, this is what you have to do. You know for teachers and that's what the state was giving us so unfortunately in the spring of 2023 it was i bet it was may or the end of april when we got the negotiated <coughs> agreement done i don't know if you guys remember at all but uh, you know that's but all long i guess that doesn't answer my question my question is what fences do we deal with when i look at the salary spread or i guess i'll just ask it so isn't it up to us to decide our pay scale and our raises and that is there fences the state that I'm unaware of puts around? Well, so much of the new monies has, I think it's 70% has, has to go to teacher rate. Okay, so that's a minimum, but not a Right, maximum. but you got to remember that new money also has to cover administrators and your classified as well. Yeah, I don't think there's an upper limit that the state put. Well, I mean, okay. If you want to pay every teacher 200000 a year, oh, yeah, you I think you could. could. But the okay. minimum okay. would be... So a minimum of seventy percent of the the new monies that, that you're getting from the year. They even okay. change that though from year to year, don't they? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Some years there are no stipulations. Some years there's some. Yeah, the yeah. I mean, so you know, unfortunately, yeah, they, so, yeah the yeah, the legislature yeah, drags their feet on it, and it's like a negotiated year. It'll never and that's always the last thing on the docket yeah. is education because it's. But yeah, I don't so think so much funding is. I wish they would finish. So, that for in fact, that statement that we have to take away from some pay to raise some other pay is not true. Then, well, it is. If, well, it I is mean, we don't have an endless supply of money, right? Right. right. Yeah, I mean, you've got a budget. You got Correct. X amount, and you want it to balance. Right. So, I mean, but that statement, that in, its, in its wood literal sense, is not. It no, still it comes is, down to budget, right? You no, know, it's well, it is true. If you if you have a limited budget, and if you want to raise a bunch here, you might have to take some money here because you okay. don't have a. So that's what was meant by that statement. Unlimited okay. budget, right? I mean, right. it would be awesome if we could just not have that constraint. I mean, but that's no, not I get you. I, mean, I was just looking for clarification of that because it it was said specifically that you have to take from other teacher salary to add a position or something like that. So. Not yeah, from your salaries, maybe from their raise. I mean, you may have to, you may not be able to give as much of a raise if you had another position because you, would, at the end of the day, you only have so much money, so much money give out. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could spend yourself on. I mean, federal government does it all the time. I guess maybe we should do. No, and that's not what I'm suggesting, Joe. <laughs> please yeah. don't, please don't 
yeah. verbalize what you think I'm thinking. I'm just right. trying to clarify that statement yeah. that was said specifically. You have to pull from teacher salary to add a position. Not from teacher salary, from teacher raises. If you have giving, to, so you're, you're saying we you have to pull from teacher raises well, to add a position. Well, percent of the budget for the school is salary. Okay. So if you're spending, if you're adding another position of any kind, and you don't get funding, and so you may may not be able to give out as big of a raise as you would have if you didn't add the okay. position. But that, not just for teachers. Right. Not it's that's for, for everybody. The district staff. Yeah. But irregardless, when we look at our total budget, as long as we're within budget, we're within budget, right? Yeah, as long as we right. we yeah. have balanced our budget the last uh, right. yeah we I mean it was in our plan here that we've been anywhere from a hundred thousand to half right. a million and when over. the SR money runs out that that will change it gets tighter yeah, that, it'll enough. get tight and you'll you'll be back to negotiating and yeah, fair yeah. so I, I don't know where we're we're left on this with I mean I don't well, there's a decision that needs to be made other than a consensus that. Well, I think it's yes, the goal of everybody every year to get contracts out. Of the our contracts out. I don't think there's anybody in the school, teachers included, that don't want to issue contracts as soon as you can. Well, and we, we just historically haven't been then, or you know, and well, I, like I say, I point to that. Maybe historically, we've done it as soon as we could get done with it. And it's not just weather. us. You have to remember, it's the teachers. We're negotiating with the teachers, and sometimes the teachers. So have we to, had the, the teachers want to know where the state goes? So we've had the collaborative bargaining agreement hold up the issuing of contracts, is what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's just something that maybe we can work on for the intent of, of... Well, like I said, I think everybody in the school, teachers included, would love to do it as early as you can. Uh -huh. I don't think anybody that doesn't want it. When I was, but I'm, the reason it wasn't done is because of the funding from the state. Correct. They were They were taking forever to decide where they were going to be at. So something like this, in my mind, what we should be doing is getting a book of, of bylaws of how we operate in school um, and just agree upon what our desire is and, state, and issue that to our there's administration. There's a statute on what you have to do with negotiating. Yeah, we just read it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you got to follow that too. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. I hear it. I just think we should write that into um, our bylaws and, and just take a good look at it because it's, it, it's probably a large factor in our ability to <coughs> to recruit good staff. Do you know if we have bylaws? Yeah. We don't have any bylaws or any. I, I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah. What we what we what we do or I think for this it might not be bylaws, I think it might be uh Operating procedure? Uh, procedure, but there's a, uh, yeah, I guess standard operating procedure, that kind of stuff might be in the place of your bylaws for an organization like this. We have books of minutes, I bet. <clears throat> History of minutes. You guys good? Um, One thing it just be, which just take it as an action item with Ziegler to discuss teacher contracts, some of the board's thoughts, which I mean, to me it's more than just timing. There's a lot, like I was saying, about language of the of the contracts, you know, kind of how we how we kind of lay that out. I think we could, could improve it. It's one of the, it, if, if it's challenging to find teachers, that's just a fact, right? Um, and it's this, although it can be challenging, is one of the easy things that you can do for, you know, retaining and recruiting teachers in my mind, because it's it's black and white stuff. It's just timing. It's how you write the contracts. It's that type of thing. Um, actually recruiting is a lot of times more challenging, right? So, so I just make a motion that when we put it as a item when Ziegler joins us to, to discuss. So you want to put it on the agenda for the future? Correct. Okay. We can do that. You know what timing on that can be because it certainly won't be an issue until maybe November, December. 
Yeah, we don't want it to wait too long. Right. Okay, administrative contracts. Uh, we've got two of them. Should be, should be just, well, I guess not two of them. We have Amber and Dr. Vogel, right? I don't see. Unless she's. She's already she's under. Her, she's, uh, yep, she's already got her, her contract. So we, we've just got. We've just got two. I think the board action, uh, that's sort of, I think that the decision that needs to be made is that um, the rate that's put in them over last year. So I propose that, you know, that we uh, do a three and a half percent raise to the, the Amber and the bogus contracts. And you guys had requested no other changes on your contracts. Okay. Other than that, so um, with that, I would. I mean, yeah, we just need board approval on that. Do you guys want to see the contracts? We have copies of them. It's it's up to the board members. I know you like to look at. Contracts. Yeah, I'd sure like to see it. I guess my question would be: Are we doing three and a half percent just on the girls' contract, or just the administration portion? Because if I'm understanding Dr. Bowles' contract, it's it's. A portion. I don't, think no, I don't think there's any difference. There's no difference in the contract. I think it's just one a flat fee contract. Yeah, three and a half percent to it. You know, the only thing that you don't add to is the the health benefits and the, right. You know, the, yeah. Other than that, it's the sick leave the foundation salary. Okay. The base yeah. salaries, three percent. So, do you want to see that before we vote? No, I guess at, at that kind of there. A dollar amount. I'm not worried about three and a half percent raise to this. I would just like to see the contract to my prior point of understanding the contracts because I hear somewhat library duty, some of this and that, and then it's not disseminated in the contract. I think it's just wise if we'd have that spelled out so we understood. Okay, we have a Dwayne made a motion. Yep. The three and a half percent raise. I'll okay. second. Second. Chad will second it. Any other discussion? Saying none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. So your contracts are approved so you can sign them. There's an edit <laughs> to fix that. Stop. <clears throat> okay. All right, assistant. So, brings us to our last item. Assistant principal slash career advisor and discussion regarding career Counselor, uh, or more discussion about her counselor. So, uh, I believe we have. Do we have a job description? Yes. Being a student slash assistant principal. Try to open it up and it just sounds fun. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, for I tried twice. Still. You got to reboot. I guess. So, okay, I see. You know, board action underneath of this. I mean, we're not deciding right now if we're making a decision on this. This is, we're just gathering information, correct? No, I think we could, if we want to decide tonight, we can. I, this. So are you talking think, for this next school year yeah. right away? I mean, how easy is it going to be to find, we're already looking for three teachers. I mean, I, don't I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't see the benefit of rushing a position like this myself uh, I think we need to obviously have time to advertise it mm -hmm. pick somebody that we want to whether it would be somebody internally wants to do it or it's uh, applicant or whatever it happens to be I mean I know we've talked about it a, a couple different times um, but I think there's a lot that's going to go into this more than just making a decision right now is my opinion can I make a comment? Am I allowed to talk? I don't know. Am I not allowed to talk? <laughs> sure, go ahead. I think that you need to look back at that, the way the century code reads out. And maybe you have an attorney take a look at that on what your actual requirements are. Because the way I see it is that there's a counselor that is required for K through 6, and there's also a counselor that is required for 7 through 12. The way I see it is that there's two that are needed. The way that Century Code reads out, 
So I just think that that would be a, a, a wise thing for you guys to make sure that that's, that you can do your 1.09 or that if you do need to have two of them. And that might make a difference on that position. Let me look at that. Um, this position came about per the request of, of Mr. Ziegler. I think, I think in looking at what he's coming into and what the school needs, that this is what he asked for. So just so you guys know. I mean, well, kind of even more of a reason to hold off then because if there's questions that I've got, then I, that's the person I'm going to ask. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just don't, I, I don't know. I don't see the, the yeah. benefit to rush something like this right now. So this document we have was written by Ziegler? No. No. Who was it written? No, I think it was written by a combination of Multiple. Mr. Ziegler. So, Dr. Bogle, Mr. Bowles looked Bowles. up some. My question is that if you're going to wait, who's going to do it next year? Uh, who's going to do what? You know how many times I've heard we're under crunch time on, on right. times so, that we had a lot more time than this? And and I, if you're not going to put it out there, I, I'm just curious. I, I mean, I, I think that, that, well, that's part of the reason I'd like to have the person who's helping make this decision be here is so we can talk about our options rather than just making a new position that is more than a career advisor. I mean, I'm all in on, on, I've brought it up many times that I think we need to do something like this, um, but to make it happen right now for this next school year, I think seems a little rushed, I, in my I, opinion. And we don't have all the people here that are gonna- I would agree with you that be it's gonna be rushed, decisions. but just, my question is who's gonna do it? You're talking the career advisor portion, right? Correct. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's mandated by the state. No, and see, so to Lisa Ani's point, we probably need to clarify this, and to her point, we're probably going to have to get to a lawyer to understand this. But I, I sent it, I don't know, Jody, if you can distribute the actual century code to read that. And well, I can. I'm a C plus grammar student, but I read it differently than it was described to us. I can forward an email to these guys, but I don't know if they'll get it or can you guys get your email on these computers? <clears throat> well, for sake of time, I'll read it as articulate as I can. So, Century Code 151619, Counselor Positions. Counselor Positions. And I want to clarify that the Career Advisor position is not anywhere in the Century Code other than Section 4 of this. So there's four sections to the Century Code. Number one reads this, beginning with the 2010 to 11 school year, each school district must have available one full-time equivalent school counselor for every 300 students in grades seven through 12. That's item number one. Item number two, beginning with the 2022-23 school year, each school district must have available one full-time equivalent student counselor, school counselor for every 300 students in grades kindergarten through six. So the distinctions there are that in the first one is grades seven through 12. The second one is grades kindergarten through six. And it's a non-issue anymore on the dates because we're under both for dates. But we have 300 kids in the whole district. Correct. Mr. Paulson. Right. So that's where the percentage is broken down. So we're interpreting it that way, but is that the correct intent and interpretation? That's the way I interpret it. Okay, and I'm not sure that I interpret it the same way. And I'd like to, so, to clarify that. So what do you to disagree? What do you think, Mr. Paulson? Well, I honestly think it means that we need to have a school counselor for grades 7 through 12 and kindergarten through 6. Two counselors? Correct. Then item 3 says up to one-third of the full-time full equivalence requirements established in subsection 1, which was the grades 7 through 12. That was the point I was trying to clarify earlier may be met by the career advisor. So the career advisor portion can only be applied to the seven through 12 portion, which further leans to that the intent here was a separate position in my interpretation. Like I said, I, I'm no That's lawyer. for larger schools. 
Well, this so, is the century code, and that's what I'm trying to understand. I, well, I know, but we don't have more than 300 kids. I get that. In the whole entire district. I guess. So do we know what, like, Mott and whatever, are they doing it the same way we're doing it? Yeah, they, you know, counselors are hard to come by. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, they do the career advisor, and they split it up so they can meet. Right, but what I'm saying is they have a, one counselor cover K through 12 versus yes. one doing K through 6, one doing that 7 through 12. Right, right. Now, another consideration of this is that the career advisor position does not, it's not required, it's just can be used to meet this requirement of number one. Second thing is the career advisor is not reimbursed. That comes from general funding. Uh, the career technical counselor can be reimbursed. And we currently put in our counselor for 0.38 position. And we're going to reimburse like $8,600 out of career technical money, a separate funding model for the career counselor. But the career advisor piece does not qualify for that. The career advisor also should be overseen by the career counselor. A counselor is a different, it takes a master's degree to achieve counseling. The career advisor doesn't even need any sort of certification. All right. So why don't we get have our lawyer look at it and let's get the clarification. Uh, absolutely. And then this assistant principal career advisor position, I know where it's coming from because we have uh, Dr. Vogel and Dr. Peters took on the principal position so that the overload is starting to catch up. So what I think is Let's see, Mr. Ziegler would come next month. And I'm not so sure we couldn't get him to come up earlier. Let's get the information we need for the career counselor. Let's set up a meeting and let's act on assistant principal career advisor with Mr. Ziegler here. I'm fine doing that, having a separate meeting or whatever. I mean, because I and mean, the need is here. The need is. I don't is, disagree. Yeah. So let's get clarification from Mr. Paulson on and the rest of us on, your, on the counselor and what we need from our lawyer and then let's then we can act on it and we'll have a special board meeting and get it done. My question on that is, well, I'd almost like to add to that meeting in terms of what other needs do we have for staff position. Well, um, I, we, we just went through, if I could, Dwayne, we just went through our data that pointed glaringly at a need in well, mathematics in middle school. I agree. I don't have any data. Yeah. And that's one thing I'd like brought to this meeting, maybe for Mr. Ziegler, is what data, what information do we have that this is a need? We we said before about you, your own words, you said that uh, why we have a finite amount of money, right? Well, if we're going to add positions in our staff right now, I think we need to make a wise decision about where our money's best invested. I'm not convinced that administration is compared to our data. That shows, and we say in our strategic plan that we make data-driven decisions. Well, we might as well take that out of there. I don't have any data that says we need this position, yet I've got data here that says we need help in middle school math. Do you have data from your administration telling you that they need help? Just just, just information, is that? Do we have any more? Uh, that's where you need to trust your administration, Mr. Moss. Yeah, yeah, trust is a big factor in there, I agree. Yeah, see, it, it is. It is. I, I think... And, I, and, I, and in all fairness, I think Mr. Ziegler can't walk in here next month, even two months. He's got to be here a year. I'd at least like to see a and, layout and see of understanding. Where, and see what our needs are and see from his perspective what our needs are. Because yeah. like I told you at the last meeting, Damien, our, our job is to watch budget, hire a superintendent, and hire Amber. And we turn it over to them and they hire the staff that they see is needed. Yes, we give input on what we th feel is needed also, but they are the ones that do the hiring. So, I mean, you can, you can take it wherever you want it with it, but I would, Mr. Ziegler is going to have a hard time answering that question next month or even the following month without being here. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Dwayne, that what we should be doing as a board is that high level um, approving. And that takes getting good recommendations from our administration, which we don't get. Well, part of a good recommendation, if I could, go ahead, Mr. President. Part of a good recommendation is that data and support 
outside of just trust me, I'd like to see what those positions are, the time span, the, the that. And I also question this, how come we get into the details when we're talking about HVAC, but yet when we're talking about administration and staffing, then you're telling me we shouldn't touch that. We should have a consistent approach to curriculum, administration, job roles, and staffing is it certainly is. Our job is as a board, it certainly is. What? Is that what it said in the new board membership meeting? What's that? About what your responsibilities are? Responsibilities, but responsibilities are the minimum requirement responsibilities, right? Right. But certainly there's nothing, did, it never said anything in the orientation that we can't ask questions around oh, what no, the intent. No. And I think we have to, it is incumbent upon the board to make wise data driven decisions about where we put our staffing money. But I also think it's important to have the person that's going to help make that decision here. I don't think it's really going to do a lot at this right. time to sit and go round and round about it. And, and I, mean, I don't know, I just think without Mr. Ziegler here, without having more information on multiple things, I think we're arguing, we're not constructively doing anything. So I guess I'm asking and arguing for that information to understand what the administrative positions do and what the need for this position is. That's what I'd like to have come to that meeting. It's just an ask. Okay, well, let's get it done. Does everyone have a special meeting? Yeah, I would. I think let's reach out to Mr. Ziegler and see what he's got availability wise. I mean, obviously, yep. we need to figure out the counselor into things, um, you know, have that clarified. And then let's, you can have him do that too. Okay. And then go from there. Do we? We need a career advisor for this coming year. I, I'm asking, do we need a career advisor for this coming year? We do. Because without a career advisor, our All kids don't get, right. don't get scholarships, they don't get their college stuff lined up, right? Career advisor is not required by Century Code, right? right? But do we want one? That's a very good question. I say we want one. I, or I want one. I do too. Yeah. I mean, I, so, I just wanted to clarify that. I mean, I know it's not required, but does this school want one and do we want to support our kids that way? You know, and then if we have consensus that we want one, then okay, we don't have to argue about that anymore on the career advisor piece. Okay. So then it comes down to do we need one or two counselors for splitting up our, our grade levels? So let's find it out and then we can decide. So is it just that question? I need to know because I'm probably going to want to call a lawyer. Yeah. Um, you know, do we need one or two counselors? Is that, is there more questions than that? Oh, yeah. so the question to the lawyer is just clarification on the, on the center code, right? Clarification on center code if right. we need one or two counselors, right? right? But is there more questions than that? Yes, my I have more questions around the idea of what position should be doing what duty. You know, certainly the career advisor tied the to the, no, not for the lawyer, Okay, but for the next meeting's discussion. And for instance, there we tied the career advisor before to the elementary principal, and I think we discussed why that was not a, a great. What should this career advisor, if if we, and I'd like to see some data on why we think that a career advisor is is needed, right? Because again, so I've got so data here to tell you. We don't want one. Are you thinking no? Or I'd like to see some data of, of what the career advisor. We've got some duties here, which is nice to have that information. And I say data, I mean information, whatever. But I'd like to understand what we're expecting out of the career advisor, why we want one, and then what what duty that best ties with, because we're we're not suggesting a full-time career advisor, right? So how what position within our school does that best tie to? What role does our current counselor play? I think it would tie really nice to an assistant principal. What's that? Now? I think it would tie really nice to an assistant principal. Okay, fair enough. I mean that's just my opinion. I don't think you're wrong. I just think there's a lot to take in on making a decision. Yeah. Uh, no, that's fair. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I I get where you're coming from, John. When you say, yeah, 
all of a sudden, hey, we're under the gun, we're under the gun again. Well, let's step back and not be under the gun. Fifteen point one zero six nineteen, right? And I can forward this email to Damien. Um, What's that? What you have the one you sent me? Oh, okay. I mean, it's just, just a snippet of the script, yeah, of the century code. Do you guys have a time that would work best for a special meeting? Or, let me just, I'll just figure out what works for this. See what works for you. I think try to set something up with Russ, see when he get an addition back to us, okay. and see if we can make it work. And the virtual option is, is good when you start talking special meetings and trying to get Mr. Ziegler, us together in the summer. Yeah, it gets busy. Okay. Anything else on that? I think we can that first. RACTC. No meeting. Okay. RESP. Anything on that? No. Are they not meeting anymore? RESP or is it, is it gone? Or it's the, the director switched. I probably need to just give that new director a call and kind of see what they are doing. Are we are we using their service as much? RESP. Yeah. I've set up some training through yeah, okay. We do lots of yeah. different trainings through there on and off. It depends on what staffing needs are needed. Okay. And is that a, you reach out to them or they just you just take their newsletter and take They it? offer a lot of different things and so um, we'll see if there's something that people need and if not, if there's something that seems to be a trend in our school, then we'll just reach out to them and sure. we'll say what they can and can't offer. Yeah. Okay. Next scheduled meeting. Uh, is Wednesday, July 10th. And that would be the <coughs> annual meeting. Real and that'll be two meetings. You'll start at seven. Yeah, you'll so do you want to start at June 7 or do you want to start it earlier? In the, I don't know. Because we had a short <laughs> half hour meeting <laughs> that started the beginning of the clock. Before this one, so I think <laughs> we should start it at 6 o'clock. Oh, you want to switch out one to 6 guys? Yes. I'm good with that. 6 o'clock. Yeah. 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 Two meetings, especially four. And again, we do not have to canvas the election or anything like that. Okay, congratulations, John. Mr. Olson, welcome. Uh, See you at the next one. You can stay for two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, meeting adjourned.